So structure. Now, I, I was thinking just before we start today, I was thinking um, there is a, there is a, let's say a disconnect, be it, be it sort of like hypothetical between teaching via uh, remotely and teaching uh, in situ. But it's actually mostly to do with the difference between teaching from from 2D images and teaching from from life. So Zoom teaching on Zoom needn't be any sort of restriction on learning about three dimensions and learning about structure. So it's a mistake if, if you know that 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 it that it's impossible or it, or it just doesn't come across. It just depends on how you teach it. So I am always emphasising the structure and showing you how to deal with the structure, regardless of the class uh, and regardless of the, uh, the materials that we're going to be using as well. Um, and I'm going to try and show you another way to try and get your head around thinking three-dimensionally today. I'm going to start, though, uh, the usual way in referring to this image and drawing straight lines, looking at, looking at where things are and looking at angles and so on, even though this is an organic image, the sparrow hawk's head. Same thing, whether we're going to be drawing buildings or whether we're drawing organic forms, just it's, it's the structure and it's the same thing that you can apply to either of these things or, or indeed to anything. I'll start off, I'm going to do this um, with, with a bit of charcoal. Uh, you can use pencil or you can use, bit of willow. if you're going to use charcoal, Use a, if you're going to use a lump of charcoal, use the willow charcoal, not the, the denser stuff, because the willow charcoal, the very brittle, uh, very light stuff, is uh, much easier to erase, okay, and so to, to, to change or to fix, adjust. And you could also use a charcoal pencil if you like. Now, first of all, there's the image. This is what we're going to be drawing, or this is what I'm going to be drawing. You, you, you may have brought your own image, which is which is great if you have to apply this to. But if you're drawing from the same image, that's that's fine also. So I'm going to start talking about a structure and showing you a structure in exactly the same way as I normally would. But then I'm going to show you something sli slightly different. So if I start thinking about what size I want to make this, I'm going to use the charcoal on its side, broad side, to make some straight lines, make some straight marks. There's a top, that's where the top of its head is going to go. Let's say this is where the uh, the crook in it, the, the, its neck is going to be, where its, where its chin, as it were, uh, changes direction on its, on its uh, chest or breast. So I'm going to try and fit the head within there and there. I'm going to think roughly about how uh, wide the head is going to be. So that I've got myself a kind of very simple framework to try and fit the main part of the head within. That's just the usual sort of stuff that I'm always going to I'm, I always show you. Then I'm going to look at where I think things are. So the eye is very prominent in this, and also it's just a head. We're we're not doing the whole bird. So if I make a mark where I think the eye ought to be within this within this frame, this frame being containing the main part of the head, not the whole of the bird that we can see, including its you know sort of its back, just the head. Where is its head? If I make a mark, where is its eye on its head? If I make a mark through the middle of where I think the eye is, so so this is something worth thinking about. The eye is quite big. So when I say make a mark where the eye is, you have to decide, as I do, you have to decide exactly which part of the eye is involved because there's, you know, because it's quite a large, it covers, it covers a fairly large area within this little frame. So I'm going to think through the middle of the eye, through the center of the eye, first of all. I mean, these are just guides, but this is the way to do it. Then I'm going to think, where is the eye in relation to, let's say, the front of the head, the forehead? So it's hard to tell where the where the, the side of the head becomes the forehead on this bird, um, partly because it's from a photograph, but, but because of its plumage and its markings, it would probably be quite tricky to tell, even if we were sitting looking at the actual bird itself, un unless it started to turn its head around, which it probably would. Wherever, the, wherever you think, if you when looking at the image, trying to sort of ignore the sort of colours and the markings, but trying to think about uh, where the, where the you know the, the, the corner would be turned, 
on its head, it, it, that point is what I'm going to try and mark. And it's going to be not too far in front of, its, of where its eye is. Now, if that, if that mark is indeed the turn of the head, I'm going to move this mark out a little bit here, the first mark I made. This area from here to here now, if I rub out the that is going to be the, the, the breadth of its forehead, right? The breadth across the front of its head. So what I now also need to do is to, to, to draw across, draw the angle across there, if there is an angle. Now, if, you, if when you're drawing anything, you have to think about your, I mean, I'm talking about anything in, in reality and in, in three dimensions. If you have to think about where your eye level is, and you, you have to think about it, and in, in also when you're looking at photographs as well. In other words, where the photo, the photographer, and where the camera was in relation to the bird, whether it was above or in line with its eye or below its eye, and so on. So I would say that I was just about my eye level was just about in line with its eye, but maybe slightly below, or. It's tilted its head just very, very slightly to its left. These, these, these are very small margins, but these are really useful in helping to understand angles and perspective. So if I imagine I can see right through its head, if its, if its other eye is going to be absolutely in line, uh, at least on the same level, even though its head is turned slightly towards us, if it's going to be in line with its with the eye we can see, then that means that it's then my eye level will be at its eye level. In other words, wherever the horizon is, is our eye level. So I'd say it's probably just about if I trying to imagine, you know, if it turned its head without tilting its head towards me, I'd probably see that its its other eye is it's sort of in the same place. So. Let's make it our eye level is indeed its eye level. So everything above its eye is going to have different angles and everything below its eye going across, going into the, the picture plane, in other words, the three-dimensional space is going to be angled either one way or another. So across its forehead, in line with the center of its eye, it will just be a straight line. So if I make a straight line there, now, anything above the center of its eye is going to start to tilt very, very slightly. And as it goes further away, if it had a crest, for example, uh, as it goes further away from the eye, the angles would get steeper. But it's, the top of its head is fairly close to its, to its eye. So if I was to try and draw the angle across the top of its head, not the curve of its head or the shape of its head, but to try and think of a, a, a framework within it, the angle might be slightly tilted like this. So the curve of its head would peak on that line, if you see what I mean. Okay, but we're not drawing the we're not drawing the shapes yet. So if I if I can if I sort of like follow that mark through, and if I now put in where I think the center of its head is, now the center of its of its forehead, I mean isn't going to be in the middle of between these two marks because of the effect of perspective, because its head isn't turned directly towards us. If its head was turned down directly towards us, the center of its head would appear to be bang in the middle of that, but of course it isn't. So that means with the effect of perspective taken into account, the center of its head is going to appear to be slightly further over towards the other side. This is the rule, this is the formula. Okay, so you don't even have to be able to, to, to suss that out, although there are some clues in the image. If I hold up the image, try and show you this. So all this stuff is critical to making the thing work three dimensionally. Okay, if you look here, this is the, this is the bill, this is called the sear, and the sear fits around the bill. If you look at where the center of the bill or and or the sear is, which is about here, see where I'm pointing to now? It's about there, right there. You imagine you follow that line up around the sear and then 
where, where that is in the head. And there's the center of its head. Now, the feathers arrange themselves sort of pointing towards the center of its head quite handily there. So that's where that's roughly where the center of its head is. If we if we were to continue that line, the center of its head is somewhere up here. In other words, it looks like it's getting towards the, the edge of its head. That's the effect of perspective. And this is how to think three-dimensionally. The other way to think three-dimensionally is to think around, to think away from us, to think across, away from us, into the, into the, the, the space. Now, if I show you my drawing at this point, this is what I've done. So this is this is roughly the dimension of the head. If I extend, hang on, let me just extend this mark down. This is the frame. This is the frame, right? So the tip of its the, the, the furthest out curvature of its beak is somewhere here. This is the center of its head here. This is the width of its head. But of course, it curves. It's not. It doesn't come to a sudden corner, but. The way to think about this structural thing is to just make a mark where the where on the cusp of the turn, as it were, on the apex of the turn. So this is this this is going across its head from this point here. There is going into the you know three dimensionally into the paper. You see what I mean? At a particular angle. Now I've also put a tilt on a, a very slight tilt on this top mark here, which is supposed to represent going across the top of its head, away from, away from this side of its head, across to the other side. This is without the curve, right? Now, if I add the curve onto this and, put this, and follow the center line around shapes on my drawing, you'll begin to be able to make more sense of my drawing. So have a look at my drawing now as it is. And I'm going to add these things, and I'll do. I'll add these things on the camera as well. So I'm going to I'm going to put in a rough idea of the curve of the top of its head, and then I'm going to do do through the middle of its head as well. And while I'm at it, I'll put on the curve on the far side of its head, just to try and make visually to make sense to you guys. But I'm also going to follow this along this, around the sear and mark where the sear stops and then where it continues around the beak. And just to kind of make it easier for you to understand, still, I'm just going to add roughly the eye. I don't want you to add this just now. Just, this is just so you can understand what I'm looking at here. So if I put the eye in, you'll begin to see this. I make, in fact, if I put a curve around the top of the head from the eye as well, even around the eyeball, begin to see how this works, right? I'll hold this up and show you. I am not asking you to do this right now, but I want you to look at that. Look how, can you see that? Can you see the, can you see how three-dimensional? No, I'm thinking. There's where the eye is. There's the shape of the bill. There's the, the, the rounded part of the little yellow sear above, and there's the center of its head. And these marks here are drawn around the head away from me. So hopefully, hopefully that makes visually makes sense to you. Now, there is a there's a there's a a, a problem here with a, a serious disconnect for some people in me in me explaining this way of drawing. In other words, drawing a framework before you draw the shapes. It's quite difficult to get your head around. I know that it's not it's not easy because it goes against the um, the kind of instinct which is to draw shapes. What we see as shapes, we put shapes in. But this is to try and think of where the shapes are going to go before you draw them. This is what this is what this is all about. So I'm going to show you now how sensible this is, how much sense it can make 
because I'm going to draw these same marks on the image itself. Now you can do this. You can do this yourselves, obviously, if you're working from a copy. So I'm going to put the same marks on the actual, the actual image itself. I'm going to start off. It's probably not because it's a it's, it's, it's a fairly dark background. It's not it's not going to be very easy to see these marks, but hopefully with the charcoal you'll be able to make out enough. So if I'm I'm going to start with it, I'm going to do exactly what I've just shown you in the drawing, but I'm going to do it in the same order, more or less, if I remember, on here. So I'm going to start out with where the front and the back of the head are with a straight line. It's fairly straightforward. Then I'm going to look at where I, you know, where I meant the uh, the frame to, to work, which is top of the head and underneath the head there. Hopefully you can see that pretty clearly. I think the next thing I did was I marked where I thought the center of the eye was. So right through the middle of the eye with, a, with an upright mark as well. Uh, then I probably looked at where I think the center of the head is uh, on, the, on the front part of the head. Or no, what I did first was I marked where I thought the turn of the head is. So that's about there, I think. I think. Then I put the center in. Then I looked at the tilt of the head. Uh, sorry, not the tilt of the head, the, the, the angle across the top of the head, which is slightly above our eye level. <clears throat> then I'm looking at where the center goes if it follows the form. So it goes around the sear, the sear being three-dimensional, and a lot on, and around the, 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 the center of the bill being three-dimensional. And then it continues up around the center of the head. You've got, so you've got to be able to work out where the center of the head is. You've got to try and ignore the markings uh, to an extent. And I drew a, a mark, a, the angle through the head, through the front of, across the front of the head. Now, because it's on our eye level, that's just a straight line. It's just a horizontal, a horizontal line. I could follow that right through the eye as well. But then I also put in the, the curvature of the head. I'm trying to read this. By, by, by looking at, you know, I'm, try, I'm trying to read the what the shape of the head actually is, rather than just kind of, I'm making this up. And I even, if I rub that out, I even looked at that going right through the center of the eye, the eye being, being a, a sphere, there's a little curve there. And then that goes in under the eye, the eye, it goes underneath. And then before it comes back out around, these feathers on its face. And it's very difficult to read this. Then it goes away under. So I'm now adding a couple of things here that I haven't got in the drawing. I want you to look at this when I hold it up to the screen. I want you to look it up and see if you can understand how I'm arriving at this stuff. Have we look at this now? So that contains exactly the same marks as that. And hopefully, even though my drawing might be a different scale, hopefully, apart from the scale, hopefully everything is more or less exactly the same place. If it is, that shows how accurate my understanding and my reading of all of this stuff is. If it doesn't quite correspond with the tracing which I've just done, then I've made mistakes, clearly. So that's how this works. That's how it works. I, I, that's, that's what all these marks mean when I do this sort of thing. I don't normally draw this on the image, but I've often mentioned it. Often mentioned, you know, you you, you could put a an if if it was also by the way, if it was an image that you didn't want to draw on, but if you think this helps you, put a bit of tracing paper over it, or put or, or uh, better still, a bit of clear acetate, you know, like it, it, like a sleeve from a binder or whatever packaging or something like that and use a pen that will write on it and do that. And then you can take that off of the, the image so you can see what looks like that. 
except it's a tracing. So if you find that you don't, you can't get your head around this, and you find that also, maybe you can sort of get your head around it, but your measurements are way off or your angles are way off, use the tracing. Do a tracing of it and practice that, and then practice drawing from the tracing, not tracing it, the tracing, no point in doing that, but trying to copy the angles and the shapes and the proportions from the tracing until you get better at it, and then you don't need to do this. Okay, but if this helps you, use that sort of that approach to drawing it. So hopefully I'll just show you again how this how this works. There's the two. Hopefully that hopefully that makes sense. It's all the same marks. What I've added on here, which I don't have in the drawing, which I'm going to add in the drawing, is this stuff here. See the shape? I've drawn the shape. So you can see in my drawing here, if you look closely at this, don't try and draw this. Have a look at this because this is to help you to draw it. There's a shape around the eyeball. Now the eyeball bulges out. So that means that it's further away from us, this point here, than it is here. That's why it curves. That's why it curves away under there. But then the feathers have a shape so it comes out around these feathers and then there's a point where it begins to curve away. Now that point is very difficult to detect, granted, unless you know birds. Of course, I know birds, so I kind of have a good idea of where, it, where it's going to curve away. How, in other words, how big this area will be before it curves and so on. But then what happens is it curves away from us underneath the bill. There's the angle. And there's the center, there's the continuation of the center of its head. If you were to split the head in half, there's where the angle is. So that, that, that line there also continues underneath the bill, as it were, towards the tip. And then it, then it comes into view. If we were to paint a line, a central line right around the head of this bird, that's how it works. Now you can do this all the way around the bird at any angle. You see the way I've put you see, we have, I've wrapped around three, I've wrapped three shapes around its head. There's one through the eye. There's another one there. And there's another one back there. You can do this all the way around the eye at any angle you want, if it helps, if it helps you. So if I go back to my drawing now, that's how, that's how, that's what all of this stuff means, right? So if I continue with the drawing and I add these, these, these same references that I've, that I've still to add, There's sort of where there's where the the, uh, the the under part of the bill is. So there's the bill that goes under there. There's the central the center of the the central line, which which is uh, disappears, which is hidden from view underneath there. Then reappears in view if we if we had drawn it actually on the bird, it would reappear there. And there's the sort of there's the sort of curve of its of its uh, throat. And there is the, the both sides of it, both edges, the far edge and the near edge. So this is where this is where it begins to turn. Like that. Now, if I mark next where the line of the mouth is, so you can see if you fall you can you can follow the line. I hold it up again, I'll show you, just in case you can't see this. It's very important as well. See this little this little triangle here. In the middle of it, you'll see a line. That is the that is the bird's mouth. The bird's mouth opens back from its beak. Its beak is is an extension of its mouth. The beak isn't its mouth. Isn't the entire mouth of the bird. We often we often make that mistake. The beak is just at the front. So the mouth opens back nearly as far back as the eye. The beak is just a kind of a hard. Uh, you know, a, in this case, a hook on the on the tip of it, but we can actually see the shape of its bill as well. Its bill that that line doesn't automatically go go straight in a in a straight in a kind of normal curve to the tip of its beak. That line changes direction depending on the bird's beak. So it goes like this. 
drops down here. You can see it, but it's very difficult to see. And this part here, this line here, is the underside of its peak, of its lower mandible. So you can also see that there's a distance between this point and the center of its bill. So these little details are very, very important because they're structural. Anything structural, anything that helps you to think of this thing three-dimensionally, structure is three-dimensional, and how it's built. Anything that helps you with that, whether it's a tiny detail or not, is very useful, at least in theory. So I'm now going to try and draw that onto my bird. So where is it, first of all? Don't try and draw the shape, first of all, but where is, where is the, the, the line of the mouth and what's the general direction it's going? It's going like that. Where is it? It's just below the eye. And then it, it goes forward before it kind of slopes and curves uh, where it conflates with the, uh, the actual shape of the, uh, the bill itself. So it's no longer to do the center of the mouth, but it's just the bill gets in the way, the, the, the shape of the outside of its bill, which is leaning towards us. So if I hold up my drawing and show you that line that I've just drawn, this is what it looks like. This is the direction it goes in. Here's where it starts, just forward and just below the eye. Here's the direction of it. That's the center of its mouth. And then it, be then it, it becomes, as I say, it becomes sort of obscured by the shape of the bill, which sticks out here. That's how it works. So if I continue with this, so I can also see that the feathers on its face come to a point there at the corner of its mouth. We can also see a little bit of the structure of the lower mandible, which, which juts out before, again, before the, before the lower mandible curves away underneath. I'm gonna use a sharp point to draw this so that you can see it, so you can understand what it is I'm, I'm looking at here. Now, another reason why I'm showing you this, apart from the obvious, which is to try and draw it, and to try and draw accurately, is to try and emphasize how much information there is in the photograph. And a lot of that information isn't, uh, isn't clearly visible. But if you know what you're looking at, it's there. So that's why I always say, if you want to get better at drawing, let's say you like drawing birds. As if you, but you want to get better at drawing birds, you have to look at birds. You can't just like you can't just like wait until we're drawing a bird and every, every now and then we draw a bird and you, you can't hope to get better doing that. So I'm going to hold this up now and show you again the detail that's in here. So I, I'm just going to sorry, join this up to make it more clear for you. So this is the center of its mouth. There's, there's a distance from the center of its mouth to the, the base of its lower mandible, its beak. And that's a kind of straight line there. And then it curves. So it's, it's, try and see that in the image. Or if you're working from a different, from your own image, a different image, you'll see something similar, even if it's a different, if it's a different type of hawk. You'll see something similar going on in there. Okay. This is how we build it. Now I'm going to look at the sear. So I know where the sear is going. I've marked where the sear is going. It's going to fit within here. There's this mark here. It's going to fit somewhere within here. Here's the, here's where it curves around around the side of the bill. It curves up and fits very neatly, like a little helmet. It fits very neatly over the uh, the hooked bill. You can see that actually. What you can't see very clearly is uh, the base of the sear because of the feathers, but you can sort of see where it is. 
So remember, we're not looking at textures. We're not looking at any of this, um, any of this superficial stuff that we tend to kind of be drawn to. We tend to gravitate towards because that's all superficial stuff. None of it is structure. Well, some of it might coincide with structure, but it's a, it's a, it's a red herring unless you understand this first, because this is what, this is what supports it. So now I've put in the sear, I'll put in a little mark where the uh, nostril is, just to, again, to help you to identify. You cannot, there's a wee sort of dark shape where the nostril is. Hold it up and I'll show you. And now we've got a complete, I've got a complete bill. That's not to say that it's necessarily correct in its shape and everything, but you can see how that works. See how the sear fits three-dimensionally over and around the bill. bill. Now, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, um, what's the word, expand, blow up a little bit of this drawing to emphasize how important this is. And I'm, I'm always talking about this, but just to re reiterate this, if you look at the sear, I'm going to do a bigger version of the sear here. So I'm just drawing my, my own drawing here. Now what's, cr what's crucial, what's critical about this? I'm going to try and emphasize what is so important here. It's not so much the sear itself, it's, a, it's an aspect of it. I'm putting in the center of this of the sear around around the shape of it. So I'm thinking three dimensionally about it. And it goes away along there. Now this is really this is crucial, right? Now this isn't anything new. I just go on about this all the time, but again, just just to re just to uh, reiterate. So this is this is the sear. This is this is it here. This is the bit I'm drawing again. So I'm taking this bit. See that little line there? That's the center. That's the center of its head. So importantly, and I would say crucially, if you look at this shape here, on the other side of the center, what happens is, this is the bulge, the equivalent of what happens on this side of the sear. So if I mark this, I'll have to turn it around to do it. I put a line there. What we see there is sort of like what is, is where is where it disappears on this side. So it's symmetrical, right? So this little shape isn't doesn't look like this in real life. It looks like that because the bill gets in the way of it here. Right, so if I add the bill in, the bill cuts across it. So you have to be able to think three-dimensionally so that you can understand why that seer looks like that there, because it's the equivalent of what we can see here, except we can see all of it on this side, obviously. So that information that's in there, see the way that curves down there, it drops down along around the bill. That helps, that helps to describe the, 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 you know, the, the three dimensionality of, of that part of the head. And that's a tiny detail when you look at it on the photograph, but that is the information that helps to describe the, the, the curvature of it and the three dimensionality of it. Now, let's continue with this sort of stuff. So I can see underneath the bill the edge of its, the far edge of, of its uh, feathers. Its face, in other words, the feathers on its face. But what's really useful again is, I'm going to show you just to hold this up to show you again. Just try to emphasize what all, each of this is. So I've just drawn this 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 line here. This line representing the furthest point, the, fur, the furthest part out of its feathered head, right underneath the bill, right. But what is really helpful is 
if I can think, if you look at this, if I can think that what it is, is it's not a line that comes to a sudden end here. What it is, is the bill gets in the way of the continuation of the line. So that line continues, we can't see it, but it continues behind, beyond the bill, and then eventually meets up here. Presumably you'll be able to understand the logic in that. But the difference is applying that logic when you're looking at a form, especially, maybe not too much different. I was going to say, especially when you're working from a two-dimensional image like that, rather than a three-dimensional form. But actually, it probably it's probably the same problem. So that's that's how I'm trying to think. When I make a mark that curves, let's say, and then we no longer see the curve because it goes beyond our, our view, I'm thinking of where it goes. And I'm thinking about where it comes back, back round. So I'm thinking all the way around, in this case, a bird's head. In the same way as if I'm drawing this jar, and I'm looking at the ellipse here, This is the near edge to me, but because of the angle of the jar, I'm, I'm luck luckily, I can see the whole of the ellipse. But if I tilt the jar, so, uh, so you know, I'm seeing the underside of the ellipse. If I want to draw the near side of the top ellipse, I can still draw it without guessing really by by being able to see what the shape of the far side is, which I can now see. So if I can see the shape of the far side, I know it's circular. I can actually imagine and draw the whole thing, whether I can see it or not, if you understand what I'm saying. So that's the, this is how I'm thinking. This is how I'm trying to teach you to think when you look at something. So what thinking means is how you understand what you're looking at in terms of how a visual artist is going to is going to read it okay so when you look at if you're not if you're not being an artist if you're not going to try and draw it if you're just looking at a bird um and say admiring it you don't need to think about any of this stuff but you need to think about this stuff if you're going to draw it you don't draw it the same way you you'd naturally look at it which is other just admiring it and so on or just thinking roughly about okay well it's eyes there and it speaks there you have to think around you have to think three-dimensionally to, to get the best results. And this is the sort of formula, if you like. It's not my formula. It's just it's just a, a kind of, it goes back to, I, pre, I presume it goes back to the Renaissance. And it works. It works very, very well, but it has to be learned, obviously. And it's difficult to learn because it goes against our default uh, settings which are to draw shapes and to draw the strongest things we see and hope that they all kind of fall into place but it doesn't really it tends not to work very well so I'm continuing with this I'm looking at the position of the brow I've got the size of the eye I've got the eye on I've marked drawing round the form of its head, which is of course tricky, but I know that this that its brow is overhanging like ours to protect its eye. So that means that although it doesn't necessarily look like it, this tucks under here, this comes under here before reappearing here. And then it comes out probably fairly flatly on this part of its face. But there's also the fact that the mouth has to be where the mouth, where the corner of the mouth disappears and under the feathers. There's obviously, that's a, that's a solid structure. Now, so it's, it's a keratin and it's bone and, you know, and, and so on. So underneath here, where the, where the mouth narrows at the corner, that must affect, that must be sticking out beyond the eye 
or not necessarily sorry not necessarily beyond the eye but it's got to be you know it's, it's going to be it's going to be a particular point uh, outwards towards us so that means that if i continue that where where i know that line to go if i continue it through it's probably going to affect what happens to the shape of its face and you don't need this isn't something as critical as what i was telling you about with the seer but it's still use Steve, Sorry. could you please turn it round? My drawing? Uh huh. To like, mm -hmm. to sure. You know, sure. Actually. Thank you. So, what I'm talking about now, what I'm drawing now, uh -huh. is I'm trying, to, I'm trying to draw this, you know, around the head. So, there's the brow. So that, so that, this, if I was to, you know, this is like if I had literally drawn a, drawn a line with a marker on the bird, and then I'm looking at the, what, what happens with that line. So it goes underneath here in the corner of the eye, and then it comes back out. And it probably, as I'm looking at the face, it probably comes back out in a fairly flat way here. But then at some point, it's going to be affected by this, the, the corner of the mouth, which is going to be underneath the feathers somewhere. I mean, I can't know exactly where everything is, but I can see the general direction of it going there. So I'm just trying to I'm just trying to show you how everything interconnects, and you have to try and think through everything even beyond where you can see them, like I was explaining with the jar and the ellipse and and and, and so on. Because thinking this way, uh, the, when we finish the drawing, this line that I'm showing you isn't going to be there. But to draw and to understand structure, it's good to draw these to be able to see where these things would go. So if so if I now if I do an equivalent one here, it's going to be it's going to take a slightly different direction. So I'm going to add one and I'm going to do this line here, but it's not going to be the same shape here because of it's further forward on the head and the structure involved at the front of the head and the bill is different. So if I draw that on here, I'll show you. I'll draw it with a with a pencil. Now, I'm, I'm also I'm, I'm looking at my photograph. I'm not just I'm not just kind of presuming what this is going to look like. So I'm, I'm, I'm referring to the photograph so that the brow comes round here. That goes underneath, disappears, and then it comes it reappears. But it looks like there's a little bit of a bulge here. So you can see that there's a there's a there's a sort of fleshy looking bulge which produces a, a line in front of the eye. So that that looks like a bulge. So that that there's the the line disappears again under there before it comes back out here probably fairly straight, but then there's a gap. That's, this is feathers that stick over, neat, over the top of the mouth. So then it's going to disappear behind there, reappear here, and then it's going to wrap somewhere <clears throat> around underneath and go underneath the bill like this. Actually, if I make, if I make this in a different color, just so you can pick this out. I'm going to do this in red. Hopefully you'll see it a wee bit better in red. Now you, now bear in mind, you don't have to know, you don't have to be able to see all of this stuff that I'm showing you, but you have to be able to pick out some of it because, because there are clues. There's, there's the line that I just drew in red. Now look how different, look how different the passage is compared to this one here. It's much more convoluted. So what you have to try and do is to work out how I arrived at these different shapes here by looking at the photograph, if you like. And you have to presume that it, that it's that um, it, they're fairly accurate. Hopefully, they are fairly accurate. They might not be perfect. So you so see all the information that is in this bird, and none of it has to do with any with any of the markings. None of it. Well, that's that's slightly slightly simplistic or slightly disingenuous. Some of the markings coincide with the structure. For example, the white flash along its brow happens to, to, to be aligned with 
the edge of its brow, its actual structural brow underneath the feathers is what I'm saying. So sometimes, sometimes the markings are helpful, but you need to understand which are helpful and which aren't. Otherwise, if you just presume that the markings are structure and, and what you draw is the stuff that's the most obvious, it often isn't helpful at all. In fact, it's often unhelpful, actively unhelpful. Now, I'll continue with this a little bit more, and then what I'll do is I'm going to do a quicker version of this, like, you know, as if I was sketching it. So, to, because of course, I'm making the, the way the way I'm drawing this, I'm slowing everything down, obviously, um, so that you can try and you can try and understand, you know, what, what it is that I'm doing. But so, so it makes it look like a very kind of laborious process, which it is if you've no idea about what it, you know, how it works. But the more you practice it, as I say, the more it becomes, it becomes your default. It becomes instinctive. And so you don't have to think so much about it. You quite often have to remind yourself when you look at your drawing and you think, no, that's not really working. You, then you quite have, sometimes you have to think, right, okay, I need to think about this more consciously than I am, than I'm doing here to get this to kind of hang together. Now there's another, just a bit I'm drawing now, I'm just realizing there's another critical thing, another very useful thing, which is exactly the same as the thing about the seer going, disappearing beyond the bill. I'm gonna hold it up again and show you. You'll see this on the photograph if you look, if you look carefully. This is this is the edge of the, the bird. This is pretty straightforward. There's the edge of the of the bird's back. So the bird has turned its head backwards. This is the slope of its back. Now the slope of its back doesn't join up with the the uh, the outside of its head, feathers wise. The slope of its back goes beyond the edge of its head. If you look at my drawing, it goes beyond the edge of its head. And meets up with the center of its of its uh, of its feathers. That's useful in the same way that this drawing of how to how to draw the sphere, the, the, the seer going wrapping around, going beyond there is so the outside of its head goes beyond its back, in other words. You can see that on the photograph if you look closely, but it's not it's not very obvious because of the markings and because it's small. But if I use that and if I get rid of the excess markings there, now my my guides, just so they're not a distraction for you, you I get rid of these wee marks and they Including the set, let's say, get rid of the central mark as well. Hopefully, then when I hold this up again, just get rid of some of the marks in here. So, crucially, the line of its back appears to cross in front. Well, it does cross in front of the outside of its head. That helps. From this point here to there is the other is, is beyond this you know is the, the far side of its of its throat. From, there's the halfway mark there. So we're seeing something which is half obscured by the, the by the bird's back. That's important to help make the thing look three-dimensional, just as it is there. So we can see. There's the center of its forehead. We can see beyond the center of its forehead, away from us, to the other side, and it's the same under the under the throat. So this has nothing to do with markings. Okay. But now look at look at how three dimensional that drawing is. So all the all the all the excess marks, all the guides, all you would have to do is kind of rub them back as I as I started to do there. And then what you would do is you'd start thinking about. The, the plumage, the markings on the plumage and you know and the and also if there is a structure to the to the plumage. But but the plumage is the next thing. 
if you like. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw this. You can watch this or you can do your own drawing because you'll have this on the recording as well. I'm going to now apply this, right? Just it's sort of in normal time, normal speed with a bit of charcoal, how I would normally draw this, okay? So you guys can either watch this or you can carry on with your drawing and see this later. But I'm going to try and sort of stick to the rules that I've showed you, I, which is quite tricky because it's a bit like driving once you learn how to drive. You do it your own way, if you know what I mean. But I'm going to try and stick to the same rules that I just showed you, more or less. They might be in a slightly different order. I'm just going to draw it normal speed. There's a wee quick, quicker drawing of it. Same thing, but drawn the same way. Now, one of, one of the advantages of drawing things repeatedly is you can compare them. So I could compare you know, see what's different about the, the second one to the first one. And I'm not really talking about the size of it, I'm talking about proportions. So one of the things I can see that is quite obviously different between the, my first drawing and my second drawing is the beak. 
I'd say the second one, the beak is more accurate. For example, although the, the, although this drawing of the beak in the first one is, is pretty good, I was aware of that when I was drawing it, but I didn't bother changing it. But there you go. So there's another there's another useful thing about re repeating, you know, drawing anything. I probably brought the eye slightly further forward as well, probably a little bit. Uh, whether it's more accurate or not, I'm not sure. Probably is a little bit more accurate, a little bit more like the position of the eye on a sparrow hawk. The one, the, the one underneath is a bit more like the proportions of an eagle's head, actually, which is different again. I mean, similar, but different again. So there's all sorts of things to be picked up from, from all of this. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll put the first one up on the uh, we stand, and I'll give you guys five minutes to, to do a bit more drawing, if you like. And if, if it helps, you can have a look at mine as well. Back shortly. 